Welcome to Crappieville. I'm Jim Hudson. I'm here with my good friends Jim Casuda, Gary Parsons, and Todd Todd. We're out fishing a small lake in search of some giant crappies, but we're using some less than traditional techniques to catch them. So come along with us as we show you how to catch these fish. We're Ice Team. Bring it! Actively searching is the name of the game for Todd Todd, Gary Parsons, Jim Kasuda, and Jim Hudson as they sweep across the early morning ice, stopping and dropping in search of some monster crappies. Not only because, obviously, catching huge panfish is fun, but because they're determined to show you that there are more engaging ways to approach doing it. Well, there's a lot of fish on the screen. I got the first drop down. Got him. Yeah, I got one. Is it a nice one? Yeah. Okay, you need oh. some help? Jim. All right, I got it, I got it. Oh, nice one, nice one. Look at that one. Oh, oh man. Oh, first drop down the hole. The Beauty. sun's not even hit the trees yet. That is oh, a nice look one, at that. Todd. Oh. Good deal. Good cool. on the look chubby at that one. darter. First drop, the sun hasn't even hit the trees. First drop down the hole, and we smacked this night's crit uh, fish. I'm guessing close to 15 inches. It grow bigger. Here he goes. Traditionally, when people think of crappies, they think of bobbers, floats, and minnows sitting around just waiting for the fish to come by. But we're actively searching. And a good search bait is starter type, a jigging lure, or a jigging spoon. Uh, the jigging spoon's nice because you can tip those with a minnow head or some maggots. And those are a good way to search and find the aggressive fish. When those fish are not that aggressive, they're somewhat neutral, then we can go to some finesse plastics here with all these little tails on here that just kind of float in the water and the crappies will just eat that up. Whether you have active fish or neutral fish, these are a few things that you should have in your tackle box to have a successful day on the ice. This is a nicer fish. You got a nice one over there? Yeah, I got a, it's a pretty good fish. You need a hand? Yeah, I think so. Why don't you come on over? Let me give you a hand. Yeah, I, I, we've been running <laughs> after you all day long. It's about time that you have to come after one I've got. What do we on got? Him. Yeah, I don't know. It's, oh, it's, look at oh, that sunny. Oh, look at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a surprise that is. Look at that. Oh, holy man. <laughs> What an awesome looking fish. You know, he didn't quite bite like like the crappies were. It was like more of a tick tick sort of deal. And oh, get him out of there. I thought he was so big. I never expected he was going to be a, a big gill like that, a big sunfish like that. I, I guess it did bite one like one. I just <laughs> I didn't expect him to be biting a jiggy rat, I guess. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> when you're out here fishing these small lakes like we're on today, there's two key things that you want to look for when targeting these crappies. One is lake type. When you're looking at your lake maps, look for lakes that have deep basins. What I mean by that is 20, 25, 30, 35, sometimes even 40 feet of water in these small bodies of water. Like this one we're on today is 40, maybe 60 acres big, but we're in a 35 foot hole. And that's where these fish are stacked. The other key is something that you gotta really keep in mind and that, that these fish have a time limit. These fish don't bite all year long. Because of the small water, there's low oxygen levels as you move on throughout the winter. So what you wanna do is get here during early ice, right up to that midwinter period, right when you get about 12 to 15 inches of ice. You get here during that time and you get on a lake that's got deep water, you're going to catch some really big crappies this ice season. These fish are riding really high in the water column, which is pretty, pretty usual for uh, this time of the year. They're suspended and uh, there's another nice one that we Got, but you can see see how big we've upsized to catch these fish. A lot of little fish around, but there's a lot of these big ones too, so we want to catch the big ones. So what we've done is uh, upped our profile of baits and it's been really working. Today I'm fishing with the Vexlar FL22 HD three color flasher. When we're walking around looking for these suspended crappies, they can be anywhere in the water column. And with the FL22 HD, I can always find a depth range that will allow me to expand the whole water column onto my display so I can really see clearly the target separation that really makes the Vexlar FL22 shine. My tactic has been to find the school of crappies and present my jig visually above the school of fish, and it seems like the large, aggressive crappie will just zoom up and smash my bait. While narrowing down the water column, it's important to still be open to both active and passive presentations for crappies. <laughs> wow! 
Look at that hog. Especially amongst a group of friends, so you can get the clearest picture possible on what the fish are mostly in the mood for. Man, is that a nice fish. <laughs> he just cracked this jig, too. Little plastic, no live bait at all. I've got a big hand. And this guy hides my hand. That's a good fish. Fortunately, these small water, deeper basin crappies are being pretty aggressive overall. He's, you got one, oh, Todd? I kind of was sleeping on the wheel on that one. Is he a good one? Yeah. Yeah, it, it. yeah I was sleeping. I was... Just... He looks like just by the mound of his tail wags. He's a pretty good fish, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, oh, my goodness. Oh, look how fat that is. Oh, look at this look at one. It. Nice, oh, nice, goodness. nice fish, nice what fish. What a gigantic fish. That might be my big fish of the trip. Oh, wow. He, he darted him, huh? Yeah, second fish on the darter. I'm not catching many small ones, but the big ones are coming. Oh, man. That is a heck of a fish. I might have to borrow a darter from you. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow, man, almost 13 and 3 quarters. Nice. <laughs> nice. That, that is a heck of a fish. <laughs> well, let's let them get, get back in. It's pretty cold here today. Bring it. Ice Team Tactics, brought to you by Arctic Cat. Share our passion. When we're out fishing crappies like we are, we're outside all day. Everyone has a preference in what they like to wear on the ice. Ice Armor brings that to you tenfold. They got three different types of suits. I like the edge suit, the original blue suit. This is what started the revolution in ice fishing outerwear. It's not very insulated and it fits me really well because I like to be really mobile. I drill lots of holes, I'm moving around a lot, and I layer underneath that. But now Jim Kasuda, he likes a little bit of insulation with him. I like the Ice Armor Extreme suit because it's insulated as well as wind and waterproof. Because it's insulated, I don't have to wear many layers underneath and I can fish outside all day long and stay warm. Gary is wearing the ultra suit. You know, Mother Nature's kind of a fickle lady and that's exactly why I picked the ultra suit. Because if you're out trying to enjoy yourself and you're cold, I don't care, it's not fun. So I pick a suit that will really, it's, since it's insulated with Thinsulate, uh, it's got pretty much all premium stuff. It keeps me warm pretty much throughout the day no matter what the conditions are. My wife calls me the king of overkill and believe me, that's the type of suit this is. It suits my personality perfectly because it literally is the warmest, best suit out there. Okay, fishing that chubby darter. Got one. <laughs> All right, feels like a quality fish. You got a good one, Jim? Yeah, I got one finally. <laughs> feels good. Now you can give it back to Todd. <laughs> uh oh, well, not it's not caught yet. Yeah. Okay. Back side, eh? Yeah. I'm taking it easy. I got two pound line on. Oh, get him up the hole, Jim. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I know. I'm taking it easy. This is the fun part. I've got two pound line on and I want to see this fish here. Yeah, looks like a good one. Don't get off. Don't oh, get off. That's a nice one. Here okay, it comes. I'm taking Bring it up, easy. Jim. Small hole. <laughs> Oh, yeah! Oh, look at that, <laughs> look at that okay, one! Okay, <laughs> yeah, great. That's yep. what I want. Yeah, I want to get it a nice one here. Yep. Grab your fish, I'll get them on okay. hook for you. Look at that! There we go. <laughs> That's a big crappie. Yeah, look at how thick that thing is through the back. Ooh, yeah. Nice one, Jimbo! <laughs> hey, finally! Oh, yes! Got a good crappie. That's what it's all about. Yeah. One of the things that's a little confusing is when you go into the store and you see all the different ice rods. And quite a, quite a few times the actions are not a ton different and the rods are all shorter, so you know, what do you pick? These crappie rods are going to be lightweight. I'm using a True Blue uh, light action rod here and it's got a very fast tip. This one doesn't have a spring bobber. It's one that I'm using for jigging wraps or if I'm using chubby darters. This is actually the rod that I like to use plastics with. It's the same rod, it's the True Blue light action rod, but I put a spring bobber on the end of it and then I can fish my plastics. It allows me to have a real subtle action with the plastics and detect those 
those real light pickups of the bites. Now, Todd Todd and Jim Kasuda, they're using Jason Mitchell's meat sticks. It's kind of got such a limber tip on the end, it's almost like having a spring bobber built right into the rod. Jim Hudson, Jim Kasuda, Todd Todd, they're all using two pound test, either fluorocarbon or uh, monofilament, you know, micro ice type lines. I have on my setups, I'm using a four pound test nanofill. And it's the new nanofill that's kind of got the green coloring. So it really camouflages well, blends in. It's actually thinner in diameter than the monos and the fluoros. So I'm having great luck in picking up real subtle bites with that line. So it gives you a very good combination of rods to choose from. They all work fantastic from smaller crappies all the way up to the giants that we've been catching. Ice Team would like to thank Cole's Resort for their incredible hospitality. For more on Cole's Resort of Bemidji, Minnesota, and their year-round family-friendly lodging, fishing, and other water-related sports, visit them online at colesresort.com. Ice Team would like to thank the following partners for their support. Arctic Cat. Clam. Gander Mountain. Ice Armor. Jason Mitchell Elite Series. Mr. Heater. Recycled Fish. Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters. Thorn Brothers Custom Rods and Tackle. And Vexilar.